Hey YouTube, and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're going to do a reverse seared beef tenderloin. Yes, this is going to be incredible. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing prepped before I start trimming the meat. And what we have here is lump charcoal, a couple lighter cubes on each side, drip pan in the middle. And what we're gonna do is set the, the beef loin right in the middle, which will allow this to indirect cooked until we get to 135 degrees. And then what I'm going to do is remove the tenderloin, lift the grate off, and I'm gonna take the drip pan out and I'm gonna take my tongs and take that grilled basket and bring it over, the charcoal basket, and bring it over to this side. And then we're going to take our beef tenderloin, put it back on the grill, and move it over to the direct flame. I'll show you this later. Okay, this is our beef tenderloin. I got it at my local grocery store, just Strack and Van Til. It's a seven pound loin. It was $40 and 54 cents. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it back inside, take this plastic off and rinse it off with some cold water, pat it down, I'll bring it back out here and show you how we're gonna trim off this silver skin and get it prepped and seasoned for the Weber kettle. So what we wanna do here is you'll see this layer of silver skin, all right? So we wanna take our knife, and we just kinda of wanna get under this skin because this is unedible, and you put seasoning or try to cook that, this will not render down. So you wanna cut this out. So maybe we try to get up underneath it here. Let's get you a nice, thin, sharp knife, kinda of get under it. And it should, just kinda of glide your knife with it. Could've probably got a little bit more. Do this again. Let's try to get under it a little bit better. There we go. Doesn't have to look pretty. This is not for competition. Let's try to get as much as you can. Let's also try to get a little bit of this fat off here. Any of this hard fat, you want that off. All this nasty fat, you don't want that on your meat. I'm gonna go ahead and chop this tail off. I'm not gonna throw it out, I'm gonna save it. All right, normally people, looks like this one already had the chain taken off of it, which is a piece that runs down the side here. And this here is the head. In competition, you would take this off, which will leave you with the filet here. And all this here, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. And this here could be used for burgers, um, sausages you know beef sausages or whatever you're wanting to do so i will not lose it i will not waste that i'll go ahead and leave the head on a lot of people in competitions of course this would look much better but they'll cut this head off and then they'll square it off and then go from there but we're doing this backyard style okay now that you got the fat trimmed off, let's go ahead and dry this thing down. Just grab you some paper towels and just give it a nice pat. All 
All right, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and get this seasoned up. And of course, kosher salt and coarse black ground pepper. I don't know if you can see this in the frame here, but there is some leftover salt that I spilled over on the cutting board and we're just gonna dab that in there. Why waste it? It's good stuff. And as you can see, I saved those trim pieces. Okay, next thing we're gonna use is black ground pepper. Get all the sides. Let's go ahead and get this grill fired up. And remember to keep your bottom vent wide open. Anytime you're lighting a grill, you want the bottom vent wide open all the time so it can get that airflow. Also, we will see you back in 10 minutes, but for you, it'll be one second. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and our coals are hot. So we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. And remember, keep your vent and your gauge right in line in the middle of where your food's gonna go. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna shut this vent down halfway and we're gonna shut our bottom vent down halfway. And what we wanna see is this gauge to read 300 degrees. Now that our temps are nearing 300 degrees, Let's go ahead and get this thing on here. And like I said before, we are going to do this indirect, which is called reverse searing. We'll just pick it up. We're just gonna lay it right here in the center. And we're gonna take those other pieces here, just kind of line them up. Find a good spot for them. Okay. Let's put our lid back on and I will check back with you guys in about 10 minutes and we'll take our thermal probe, meat thermometer thing, and we'll shove it in there and see where we're at. Again, we want to be around 135 degrees and we'll go from there. All right, we've been sitting here about 300 degrees for 10 minutes. Let's just go ahead and get an internal temp. And we're gonna use this Maverick meat thermometer, which you can use any of them, any one that you like. I like the big digital readouts on this. Make sure you guys, there you go. And let's just take it in the thickest part and let's see what we're reading at. It's about 83 degrees. Let's see, 81. Okay. Averaging about 83, de and 83 degrees internal temps. So what we want to do is go ahead and put the lid on. And I'm going to set the timer for at least 20 minutes and come back and check and see where we're at on the internal temps. My vents have been half and half so far and it's been maintaining 300 degrees this whole time. Okay, so 20 minutes has went by. We've been consistent at 300. The vents half and half. Half on the bottom, half on the top. So let's go ahead and take our meat probe. Let me wipe this sensor off just a little bit here. Okay. Let's go ahead and check this and see what our internal temps are. Let's see here, 110, 109, 106, 109. Let's see what we're at in here. Okay, that one's about done right there because it's closer to the heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. How about this one? Yeah, that's where we wanna pull those. So I'll go ahead and get those aside here in a minute. But meantime, I'm gonna set the timer for another 15 minutes. That'll be a total of 45 minutes on this. 
As I can see, my coals are a lot hotter over here than they are here, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate all this. I'll go ahead and pull these off. Now let's go ahead and get this thing rotated. Okay. We'll go ahead and close our lid, and we'll set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, so 45 minutes had went by. Let's go ahead and give this a probe and let's see where we're sitting at. 227, we're getting very close. 229, 230, where are we at in this bigger part? 226, 229. Oh yeah, let's put the lid back on. And I'm gonna set the timer for five more minutes and I think we're gonna be looking good. All right, we are a total of 55 minutes in. 300 degrees. Let's go ahead and remove the lid, and we're gonna take this whole rack. So make sure you put your oven mitts on or whatever you could do to lift this off. And I'm gonna go set this aside and let it rest for approximately 10 minutes. I want to remove the drip pan and want to set the coals. And we're gonna let these things fire up. So what I'm gonna do, Take some of these coals and put them over here. Take some of the lit coals and drop them over here. All we want to do is wait for these coals to fire up. And when we get a good flame, we're going to go ahead and set our racks back on and go ahead and sear this chunk of meat. Leave your lid off. We're just gonna wait for this thing to flame up and we'll be back. Okay, what I forgot to do is show you guys the internal temperatures of this thing, which I had it off. It was at 135 degrees when I pulled it. Sorry about that, guys. I just went ahead and threw the grate back on to show you guys that it was at 135 when I pulled it. So, let me go ahead and put my hot mitts back on and I'll get this back off. I just wanted to show you that it was at 135 degrees internal temperatures when I pulled it. So we're still waiting on these to fire up and we shall return. And also don't forget to open your bottom vent wide open so we can get the maximum airflow to get this charcoal fired up. All right, we are almost there. Not quite, I want all that coal ashed out. But if you notice, you see all them sparks flying off? That is 100% normal for lump coal. You will not get that from charcoal. But this is 100% normal, especially if you try to agitate. You get a lot of sparks there. Which is nice to kind of shake your baskets up a little bit anyway, but lump coal, so or any coal that you use. So now our fire is just about there. See if I can get you guys zoomed in there to see what we're going, what we're looking at. See that flame there starting to rise? That's what we're looking for. But I'm going to wait about another minute or two and I'll throw the grate back on and we'll go ahead and get that baby seared. And this has been about 10 minutes, which is perfect time for the, our beef tenderloin to rest. Okay, now those coals are ready, red hot, and let's go ahead and get the searing action done. Now keep in mind the grape has been out for about 10, 12 minutes or so, so you can safely grab it with your hands. Just set it on there. We're gonna take our tongs, and we're just gonna set this right over the hot coals, just like this. Let's try to get this turned in. As much as that meat right over direct cold as you can. And we're going to set our timer, no lid. Let's just set our timer for one minute. Let's see if I need to. So we're going to set our timer for one minute. right over them hot coals. 
I'm also going to add in the other two pieces that we pulled off earlier. Let's just go ahead and set them in there. Just like that. All right, one minute has went by. So let's go ahead and get these turn get this turned over on the other side. Same thing. Set our timer for one more minute. Okay, our minute went up. Just gonna go ahead and rotate it. Flip it. Set our timer for one more minute. Okay, our minute is up and we're gonna go ahead and get this put on our cutting board and we will be right back. All right, meantime, what we wanna do is close your bottom vent and close your top vent. So go ahead and put your lid on. And let's close the top vent all the way. And what that'll do is kill the oxygen on the inside of the chamber and will allow the coals to die out so you can reuse these coals on another cook. All right, we let this thing rest for approximately five to seven minutes. The internal temperature is right at 135, which would put us at a medium rare, which is a good temp for uh, filet mignon. So let's go ahead and cut into this thing and see how we did. go. Looks like a medium to me. Let's go ahead and get some cuts out of here. Let's get a little taste test of how this turned out. It's nice, obviously tender. Nice and moist. You guys can see that or not? Let's go ahead and get some slivers out here and give this a try. Right, the moment of truth. Let's see if I get you guys focused in on there. One second. There we go. Let me go ahead and take a little bite of that. Nice beefy flavor. You get the salt and pepper. And mm, it's really good. Just melts in your mouth right away. Let's go ahead and get another slice out of here. Let me show you guys. Let's cut one more slice. If you can see that, nice, juicy, and of course, as you get into this bigger part, oh my god, yeah, either way, you know what I would have liked to have done with this while it was resting? I just sprinkled a light coating of brown sugar right over the top of all of this, well, just while it was resting. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, let's check out our other pieces here that we let sit for a while before we ended up searing it. It's probably going to be a little, no, no. It's the same. 
still juicy. Let's see here. Nice. Yeah, let's get a little bite of this one. Let's try this one. Perfectly reverse seared 